Is there a way that we can maybe manipulate another planet like Mars, manipulate their atmosphere so it's more habitable for life? Yeah, so you know, terraforming essentially, like trying to make the planet look more similar to the Earth. Yeah, Mars is a is a common target of of our dreams of doing this. Of course, Venus is sometimes spoken about as well. The problem with Mars is it is very low mass. I think it's a tenth the mass of the Earth, so its gravity is not quite as bad. It's not a tenth. It's something like uh, maybe a half, I think, or forty percent or so. Because of its smaller size, so it's about、uh, half the size of the Earth, about ten percent the mass, I think. And as a result of that, its gravity is about forty percent, right? So it's going to be like two fifths if you do the math. So anyway, the this planet is、uh, going to be even harder to put an atmosphere on it. And so one of the reasons it has such a thin atmosphere is probably because it lost it as a result of its low surface gravity. Once upon a time, it seems likely that Mars did have an atmosphere, and it was it was lost both through its low gravity, but also through solar Activity, the sun's、um, high energy radiation can create an effect in atmospheres called sputtering that can basically chip away molecules off the top of the atmosphere and chip them off into space. And if you don't have a magnetic field, the Earth has a very strong magnetic field. Mars does not. Then you're very exposed to this type of atmospheric loss phenomena. So Mars is kind of a double problem when it comes to holding to an atmosphere, low gravity and a lack of magnetic field. We can't really change either of those things. You can't really generate a magnetic field on Mars unless you had the ability to go right into the core and dump huge amounts of energy. I, I don't know if we anyone really seriously thinks we could do that. And you certainly can't really change the mass. I mean, that's that's just another planet you're now talking about. So the only option you have is to have a temporary atmosphere. So you could do that. You could pump out and you could have these. You know, factories that pump out gases or something to try and create an atmosphere, but you'd, it'd be a losing battle. You'd essentially have to constantly replenish it because over time it would just naturally erode. So it could be done. It would just take it would take a lot of effort and continuous maintenance because Mars naturally does not want to have an atmosphere. So it would take a lot of continuous labor to to maintain it. Yeah, there seems to be a, a romantic idea that. People are going to end their lives on Mars. I think I heard Lex Friedman say that he would like to、uh, spend his last days on Mars.、Uh, do you think that in our lifetime we'll see a, a baby born on Mars? I don't know. I think、um, maybe a, a baby born on Mars is actually more feasible to me than a colony. So, maybe, like a sustained colony.、Uh, you know, I often think about with. With the idea of colonizing Mars, it might be similar to like sort of you look at the old colonies on in the U.S. in the United States, like Jamestown, and there's these these colonies that were founded, and they just couldn't survive. They just they lasted maybe a couple of decades and then they disappeared because the conditions are just in the United States even are very very difficult for Europeans without much technology to survive in. Very very challenging conditions, and you know, it doesn't take much like a little a little disease to wipe out the entire village. So I think surviving in Mars is we often underestimate how hard that would be. It's much to give you some context. It's much harder to survive on Mars than it would be in Antarctica, right? Antarctica, you've got an oxygen atmosphere, but the temperature is similar in Antarctica as it is to Mars. But Antarctica has way more water as well. So everything about Antarctica is far far superior as a place to live than Mars. But we don't have cities in Antarctica. Like we don't have colonies that there's vast amounts of land there that you'd think you know if you want space to live why not buy up some property in Antarctica great nice beautiful oceanside views but nobody's interested in doing that because it is so unbelievably difficult to live there you'd be incredibly miserable so it's not obvious to me that I don't certainly I'm not a, I don't have any draw to to move to Mars in my lifetime <laughs> so I don't want, I think the Earth is the most beautiful planet. I can possibly imagine why would you leave paradise to to live on Mars? But I suspect no, I'm not representative of everybody. There will be some people who are drawn to the challenge of living there, and I guess a key difference, to be fair, to Mars versus Antarctica is that there's a there's a reason for living there that doesn't really translate to Antarctica, and that's this idea of becoming a multiplanetary species and providing an insurance policy against extinction. So having a colony on Mars makes sense, right? Because If Earth gets hit by a giant meteor or something, it could wipe out all life, or there could be a giant war here, whatever. You could lose all life on Earth, and then you've got this backup scenario on Mars.
But I don't want to be the backup. It's just not it's not what I'm interested in doing. I'd rather live in the prime real estate. Thank you very much. So um, I could I could imagine in our lifetime, you know, depending on the on the progress we see with Starship and with the plans that you know Elon has talked about with building colonies on Mars, I can imagine it happening. But I, I'm not convinced it's sustainable. I think that's something I need to be convinced of. But I know there are many optimists who just think we have to try it. You know, it's so important for the future of humanity to try it. And I, I don't deny that it's important to try it. It's just I think it's extremely challenging to do so. Mm, this may be a bit of a silly question, but is there any ethical issue with us colonizing space? I mean, you could argue that what the Europeans did colonizing the world was, was not right. And then is it is mm -hmm. it right for us to just go and take over other planets? Yeah, I mean, even the word uh, colonization is quite loaded, right? And so, you know, I want to be uh, cognizant of that, that there has been a push to actually we should change the language we use and maybe talk about settlement or or uh, something else rather than colonization because it, because it does, it immediately, as you note, it immediately spurs these thoughts of the dark ch darkest chapters of humanity's history. And so if we're going to move to Mars, however you want to call it, we probably almost want to rebrand it in a sense to to not think that we're going to repeat the mistakes of the things that we did in the past. Obviously, it is very different because there are no indigenous people on, on Mars. As far as we know, <laughs> there are no indigenous people on Mars for us to exploit. But that doesn't mean exploitation couldn't happen, especially if it's a corporation that owns the colony, which seems the most likely way that we're seeing happening right now. If you have a company own the colony, then your right for oxygen, which is a precious resource, would be governed by the company. And so that might become your salary effectively to have oxygen and food provided to you. And that treads very closely now to a form of enslavement, essentially. These people would, you know, for their very survival, would depend on labor to, it wouldn't be particularly like a retirement home place in that situation, right? Unless you're extremely wealthy. So it, it, those are some analogies that I think people worry about with a potential colony. And then also there is the ethical issue of, even though there's no indigenous people on Mars, there could be indigenous life. We don't know that's not true. There could be some microbial life forms living maybe a few centimeters underneath the surface that we just haven't detected yet. And our very presence um, would potentially disrupt that very fragile biosphere, you'd have to assume, um, potentially contaminating it or even introducing viruses or something that could lead to a collapse of that biosphere. That's just a scientific tragedy because I think one of the, as we talked about at the beginning of this podcast, one of the greatest questions you want to answer is, you know, to understand and search for life in the universe. And if it's right underneath our boots and we and we just tread all over and, and trample and destroy it, that just seems like an enormous tragedy that we've lost that potential tomb of knowledge that we could access. Um, so we do have to think very carefully about what our influence would be and how we might contain that influence if we did plan to move to another world. Gosh, I never thought about that idea of, of how we could be enslaved because all our needs would depend on the corporation, oxygen and food and everything that we take for granted. But it made me think, what about genetically engineering humans or life to be more adapted to that planet that we go to? So we don't need oxygen or we don't need as much light. Yeah, I, I don't know how you'd, yeah, I'm not a geneticist. I don't know if it's even possible to modify humans to not need oxygen. But um, certainly the idea of modifying humans is a trope in science fiction, like the Expanse uh, series and the, and the books play with that idea a little bit, or at least not really uh, directed genetic manipulation, but just actually natural evolution by a product of being in space for so long the what they call them uh, the people who the belters i think they're called in the books the belters people who live in the asteroid belt their physiology just actually adapts to to that environment over time and so they have like very low bone density for instance and very little muscle mass such that if you put them back on earth it would, they can't survive on earth anymore because their physiology has changed so much uh so certainly there have been lots of science fiction novels and stories which have played around with that idea if you if they're purely serving us as a you know as a way of okay we need someone to clean the the plasma vents or something or we need somebody to uh, fix this problem out in the on the 
the shell out there in space, then maybe it makes more sense, I would think, to to use machines for such a for such a purpose rather than genetically engineering humans to do so. Because, you know, let's face it, machines are getting extremely intelligent these days. There's no reason why they couldn't serve many of those functions that we need. And they'd be very well adapted, of course, by by design for the environment they live in. Genetically engineering people is just a huge ethical question like is that you know is do we have the right to really change humanity's physiology and genetic material in that way have designer babies is like a whole other topic you know that we that has been very contentious so i think the the most the least controversial ethical thing to do put it that way would be to to use machines for maintaining the conditions of space uh, or the the machinery in space and then hopefully you you produce a habitat in which humans would be able to survive because the conditions within that volume would be similar to the conditions we enjoy here on Earth. So, you know, artificial gravity, you create artificial gravity by spinning uh, as a vessel. So if you just spin something in space, that will create a centrifugal force, which mimics the effects of gravity. If the ship is too small, that spinning is very disorienting. So it, it kind of gives you, because there's a Coriolis force effect which comes along for the ride, and that really disorients the human brain a lot, makes you feel very ill. But people can adapt to it. There's been experiments where they've been able to, even with a few meters across, they can get people to adapt, at least test pilots, military test pilots that have gone in these environments. And after a few days, they can do complex tasks adapting to these Coriolis forces. But if you just make the vessel much longer, like hundreds of meters or even a kilometer long or something, some huge space habitat, that spinning is very slow. And so it's actually not really disorienting at all. And people should be able to... Uh, experience both you know an oxygen oxygen atmosphere gravity or the conditions of the earth just in a space environment so i think that would be maybe more attractive to most of us i'm not sure many of us really like the idea of being modified and we would rather modify the environment to suit us rather than modify us to the environment but that's a, you know maybe a preference thing rather than a logical thing <laughs>